guys. Today we're going to do a full body edit, um, similar to our portrait edit, but again we're going to focus on a few different tools learned on, uh, used on manipulating the body, but we're going to use a lot of the same sort of initial techniques that we used in the uh, retouching of the portrait, just optimizing the picture as it is. Now before I start, you know, um, we were able to almost fully transform the portrait um, into, you know, a completely different picture. And I think it's important to just sort of realize how much photo editing tools are used in the industry, not just fashion, but in any sort of publication. Um, and Photoshop is really powerful in, in completely body face uh, altering techniques. Um, and it's important to learn because, you know, we're bombarded by images of, you know, perfect people, flawless skin, perfect bodies, whatever else. But the, th the, tr the truth and reality is they're all edited images. Almost every image we see on Instagram or on, in news media and especially in fashion publications, whether it be magazines or fashion sites or ads or whatever else, they are all edited. Um, every celebrity or anyone, you know, influencer or whatever else um, will alter their uh, photographs before releasing them. And what we get is a very altered image of reality. And I think it's really important for people to understand um, how much the images we see um, are altered, um, you know, to feel better about our own bodies and our own imperfections. Um, so I just want to sort of point this out. I think it's very important to understand. So I'm just sort of showing you, this is just a, a basic Google image search of, you know, Photoshop's before and after. And, you know, if it's something that hasn't been, you know, brought to your attention, you're not aware of, um, it's probably pretty shocking to see, you know, um, everything um, in its altered and unaltered state. Um, now, you know, you guys are pretty savvy and you've been around the block and you understand what filters are and everything else. So it's probably not, um, you know, a huge uh, revelation for you, but, you know, I just want to touch on it to begin with, um, that, you know, especially in, in fashion, every sort of image that goes to publication has been heavily edited. Nothing is sort of the raw photo. Um, and a lot of those, you know, as you can see, sort of the weight loss and things, those, those are all, pictures are all taken the same day. Just one is edited and one is not. All right, so let's get to it. Let's switch over to Photoshop. So this is the image that we're going to be working on. And um, we're going to do a bit of body editing. And um, the trick with body editing and any sort of editing is really not to go overboard, to keep it subtle, to keep it soft. Um, where people go wrong is, is they make it too unrealistic, too weird, um, uh, and sort of distort the body in unrealistic ways. Um, the other way that people sort of go wrong with body editing is they're not careful of the surrounding areas. Um, so, you know, a dead giveaway of a bad body edit, it, edit can be some weird warping or distortion in the background. Now, we're not going to have too much trouble with that. Um, we have some, you know, uh, cement or boardwalk or whatever it is here and then some bushes up here. And they're pretty staticky, so we're not going to get any real noticeable warps to it. But just be careful if there's like a railing or, or doorway or something that you isolate it and only um, work on the body so you don't get the weird distortions. Remember that you can isolate certain parts of the image using select tools. Okay, so um, you're going to find this image. It's a JPEG image um, called Full Body, and you'll find it on Blackboard, and you'll work on it for this assignment as well. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and um, do the same sort of image adjustments just to try to optimize what this image looks like um, as just a sort of base standard. So I'm going to go to image, I'm going to go to adjustments, and let's start with the levels. Um, you know, I like to start there, and let's balance them out. Now, it's a pretty well-lit image. Um, she's uh, lit from the side. It's very bright, so we don't really need to up the brightness any. Maybe just a scoonch. Um, what I do want is I want to 
bring that dark there just to give it a little bit nicer contrast. And you know, the midtones look pretty good. Maybe they can be lightened a little bit because again, we're getting a lot of lightness on this side of the body. Most of her area is going to be in the midtone area. So let's go ahead and just sort of adjust. We can lighten up those midtones just a little bit to brighten up her face and in her body. Um, and that's looking good. So we didn't have to do a ton of adjustments on the light. It was pretty well lit to begin with. We're just going to increase that contrast, make, you know, her bathing suit and her hair get, pick up those really nice, rich darks and, you know, even out lighten up the midtones a little bit. So she's not so quote unquote in shadow and we'll say, okay. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to up the, um, saturation just a little bit. Remember from before, saturation tends to look, make things look a little bit richer, a little bit nicer. Um, a lot of times it makes skin look healthier. So we'll just, just a little bit, not too much. We don't want to go crazy. We don't want weird color tones coming in. Um, and I'm going to say, okay. Now her skin is a little bit yellowish and we're picking up a lot of yellows back here. So if I want to, I can go to my color balance and try to even out the yellowness a little bit by switching that color channel, making it a little cooler, a little bluer, maybe going there. And we're gonna get now a sort of more reddish um, uh, feeling to her body instead of a more yellowish. So it's just a little bit more attractive um, skin tone. Again, I'm just bumping these things up and down minute amounts, not a lot, just a little bit. And um, with our history, we can always go back and double check to see what we did. So again, this is just um, levels and a little bit of color. So we were here, and now we are here, okay? Just a little bit better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start to do a little bit of cleaning up on her skin. Again, this is um, techniques that we have used before. So I'm just gonna look in, see if there's any sort of uneven patches. Looks like a tiny little bruise there. So I'm gonna use the healing brush on that. Boop, and it's gone. Looks like there's a little um, a tag or something there. I don't know what, right on the bikini line. So let's get rid of that. I'm gonna uh, make this a slightly smaller brush because I don't want to pick up any of the bathing suit itself. And let's just go and heal that right up. And we'll just scan along any other sorts of smoothing, any a little dot there, let's clean that up. It's pretty good. Now, we have a little bit of sort of uneven skin tone here and here, so uh, we might want to smooth that out. So remember we did that with a blur filter? Now, it might be difficult to apply the blur filter to this entire thing, although of course we could. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually just going to use, um, sorry, the blur tool, which is right here. And let's bring that brush size up a little bit and a little bit harder and strength 50%. Okay, let's try with this and I'm just going to kind of smooth out a little bit here. With the blur tool. And again, it's subtle. And let's pop on over here, get some of this. And we're just gonna smooth the skin slightly. Maybe a little bit of those knee wrinkles we can blur out there, soften it. I'm seeing a few other um, maybe color distortions. My screen's a little dirty too, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go back to that healing brush and maybe just get a few of these guys. We don't 
don't need to bother about the light. The light is natural. Maybe just a few more of these little wrinkles there. Smooth them out. These can be wrinkly, you know. Uh, Coco Chanel hated knees. That's why she never made any skirt above knee length. And maybe a little smooth out some of, some of the details here. A little bit of that shadow we can smooth out, make it a little softer. All right. Now what we're going to do, now that we've kind of smoothed out some skin. Now, I didn't do the up. Let's, uh, her face, she has makeup on, so the um, face should be pretty good. I don't really see much that needs to be done there. So let's get to some more, maybe this little side knee. Smooth that out a little bit. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and start to get to some of the body modifications. I'm going to zoom out so we get the full view. Um, so what I want to do to this is there's a few things we can do. Um, the main two tools that we use um, for body editing um, are Puppet Warp and Liquify. And I'm going to use um, Puppet Warp first to do a few things. Um, and then I'm going to sort of do some sort of smaller touch-up work with the liquify tool. Um, so let's get started. Now, the one thing that a lot of times we do, especially in fashion, um, is to elongate the legs. Um, um, as you know from probably your drawing classes, if you've taken the drawing classes, our proportions for our fashion figures are obscenely unnatural. They're all legs. Um, so what I kind of want to do is I want to go ahead and elongate her legs a little bit. Now, I'm going to run into a little bit of an issue because I don't have a lot of space down here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size. And I'm going to give myself a few more inches on the bottom uh, so I can elongate those legs into that position. So let's give myself, oh, let's, um, you know, at least another two inches. And I want it to be just on the bottom here. So remember how this is showing how it's going to expand the image? Well, I want it just at the bottom. So I want this, this is my main image, and I want just the additions to come at the bottom. So I'm going to hit OK. And you see we have a now slightly longer image. Um, and I probably won't uh, do more than that. If I do, I can go ahead and just elongate the image a little bit more. Now, what I'm going to do from here on out is I'm going to copy the background image. So I'm just going to hit Control A to select everything. I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. I'm going to create a new layer and then paste it on that layer. Now, what I can do is I can always now go back to my original to see. I mean, it looks exactly the same now, so there's no difference. Um, but it will also allow me to use a lot of these tools that won't otherwise work on a locked background layer. It's always also good to keep a sort of copy in the background um, of your original work. Then you can go back and sort of see if what you did really made an improvement, or if you don't like it, you can always go back and start again, and then just trash it um, when you are finished with the final image. Okay, so let's use this Puppet Warp tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to edit, and I'm going to click on Puppet Warp. Now, if it is not selected, um, or if it's grayed out, make sure that you are selected and on an active layer that is not locked. If I were to do something like try to work on the background, you can see that the Puppet Warp is shadowed out. Um, and I don't want that. I want to use it. So make sure that you're on a workable layer and click on Puppet Warp. Now what happens is you get this sort of spider web mesh and what it's doing is it's sort of creating points and um, uh, its own sort of fragmented sections of uh, the image. Now um, if you're working on very small areas you can increase the density um, and this will allow you to work in smaller areas in fewer definition, uh, in, in higher definition, um, so in more control over very small areas. You can also go fewer points if, of course, your situation is the opposite. You want to transform very large areas. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go to normal. That should work just fine for what we are doing. So basically how the puppet warp tool works is you create points and then you can adjust based on those points. So I'm just gonna do like a random whatever just to show you how it works. So I'm gonna make a point and then make another point by clicking. Now I can grab these points when I get that sort of arrow tool. So that is, when I just get the pin with the plus, I'm adding extra points. If I hover over a point, I get the arrow with the pin. That means grab and pick up. And when I grab by clicking and holding the mouse button down and dragging, I can start to warp and basically pinch in. Um, obviously, that's not what I want to do, so I'm just going to hit undo. Now, um, what I'm going to do too now is uh, start to create my pins. And I want to get rid of my original pins. So let me get out of my puppet warp and then reapply it. Okay, so um, like I said, I want to elongate these legs. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to elongate the arms. I want them to kind of still end there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sort of isolation of points from the bottom and from the top. So I'm going to grab points like here. Oh, it doesn't like it too close. It doesn't like them in the same sort of triangle. And then I'm going to kind of just go along here. Now the reason I'm doing it all the way out here is I don't want the background to warp too much. And I don't want to pick up the hands. So let's go down and then go out. And now I'm going to do it along the edge here. Okay, now that I have my points in place, what I want to do is basically grab all of these points and drag them down, okay? And these guys up here are going to stay in place and stabilize the image above those points and everything below it is going to go ahead and stretch down. And again, the reason I didn't do it just isolated by the feet or the legs is I don't want these shadows to warp that much. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select all of these arrows, I'm, or these points down here. I'm gonna start with one, and you know it's highlighted because it gets that little blue dot. Then I'm gonna hold shift to select the rest of them. Just click, click, click. Now that they're all selected, I just have to click on one. It doesn't matter which one because all of them will move in tandem. But I'll grab this one in the middle. And again, since they're all selected, they're going to move all at once. So I'm going to grab it by clicking down and holding that mouse button down. Then I'm just going to drag. And you can see we are getting longer legs. Now again, be careful with any warp. Now you see what's happening to the shadow. It's wiggling a bit. Woo, 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 woo. Okay? Um, if I put more points down to stabilize the image, it would warp less. Um, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal um, in the end. I can also take out the shadow. Um, I can, we might do that. Um, but again, you want to avoid anything that is going to be very distractingly warped, like things that are supposed to be straight. Like if this was a step um, or, you know, a railing or, you know, uh, even like a street line or a sidewalk crack or something that like, you know, in your brain you say, hey, that should be straight. As soon as it starts to get wiggly like that, you might want to put some points down, more points down to help sort of stabilize the image. Um, and avoid that kind of, that, that little wiggling. Um, again, because that can be a surefire sign um, that, you know, a, 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 a picture has been edited. Okay. 
Now, let's take a look. Let's zoom out and take a look at this. I'm gonna, just going to get out of the warp. I'm going to apply the warp just so I can see the whole thing. And I'm going to zoom out. And now let's just, just take a look at what I've done. So I can click the visibility uh, of layer one off. So there we see, whoop, we got her legs grown. Now I'm not too worried about this wiggly shadow. Again, um, I don't think it's that distracting. It's not s supposed to be necessarily um, something that straight. I don't know what's casting the shadow. Um, since this is her foot, this must be something else, I guess. Um, I guess from here on out, it's the foot. So I'm not too worried about it. And again, I can also remove it if it is um, weird. Although she is going to look a little weird without a shadow here because of all the light. And of course, we can always do that with the clone stamp tool. So if you want to see how you do that, let's grab our clone stamp tool. Make sure we're on a workable layer. And go ahead and let's increase that brush size so we're not doing this forever. Hold Alt down on the area of the photo that you want to replicate. And then just use that to paint over what you want to get rid of. So we can get rid of the shadow pretty easily. Let's leave a little bit by our foot. Be careful you don't run into the foot with your brush. Well, we can leave that there. <clears throat> that looks, you know, obviously her leg is going to be casting a shadow. I don't know why it was coming from. It must be something, you know, over here or something. Um, but again, you could leave it or whatever else. It just depends on really what you want. Um, and of course, sometimes taking out things um, in your foreground or background or whatever else is going to be something that you want to do if there's, you know, someone accidentally walked into the shot over here. You can use your clone stamp tool with the uh, bushes just to cover them up and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to a little bit more of um, our body editing with uh, the Puppet Warp tool. So we used it to lengthen the legs a little bit, but we can also use it on different parts of the body. So let's go back to edit and get back into our Puppet Warp. Now let's take a look at maybe like a little bit of the thighs and like this area here where it's like a little wiggly. We might want to sort of straighten that out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place pins sort of around the edge of the body here. And from here we can kind of use these just to sort of maybe straighten out that, that little wiggle. And if you want to sort of, let's put one right here too, bring in a little bit of the thigh here, you can. Actually, let's get all of these guys together. This I'd like to stay where it is because it's really just sort of this hump I want to just oops, shrink a little bit in like so. Not too much, not too much. And let's get out to see how we've done. Zoom out. <clears throat> And again, compare. It's a little bit there. We'll probably clean the rest of that up with our liquify tool. Um, so let's get to it. You know, sort of looking there, I could, I could use a little bit more smoothing. I'm kind of not super happy with the effect here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to our polygon lasso tool, and maybe I am going to apply a blur effect 
just to, you know, uh, the upper thigh region where the color tone is a little patchy, let's say. So I'm just gonna select it. And we can actually cut out that area. So let's do this leg too. I don't want the hands, the hands are fine. Maybe I should have done the whole leg and the knee. Oh well, let's see how it looks. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of that knee. So instead of doing the whole thing again, I'm gonna go to add to selection and just add a little bit of this knee here. We can, and maybe even a little bit of this down here. Now the other part of the leg is fine. So I'm going to copy and create a new layer and paste. Did I copy from the background? I think I copied from the background. Let's see. Oh, huh, okay. I didn't make my selection. Let's try that again. So we're on layer one. And I'm going to make a selection. Sorry about that, guys. Just include the leg this time in the first go. On layer one, we're selected. Maybe I didn't. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste. There we are. Um, I'm going to lock this layer just to make sure that I'm only applying the blur on uh, the second layer. And then, of course, we're going to come up here. We're going to go to blur, Gaussian blur, blur it. Now, don't worry if it looks too blurry, because remember, we're going to adjust it with the opacity. And of course, we can always start again. Then I'm going to lower the opacity so that uh, bottom image comes in, and that is looking a lot better, a lot smoother. So I'm happy with that. Maybe around right like there. And again, if this gets a little blurry in here, we can always go and just select a little bit of this area, like it's a little maybe blurry right here, and I want to up the definition. So just in this little area here, let's go and, oh, I do want it feathered. Control deselect, and I'm gonna feather it just so it's, it's not so harsh. I'm gonna feather it, it's 10 pixels. delete and then we get of course a, a a nicer sort of selection right there okay now um, let's go ahead and compare and contrast always good to compare and contrast from the original so there's our original blur not blur you can see we've done a lot of uh, nice work sort of smoothing out that skin there so I'm happy with that now let's go and um, finish up our body editing just using a little bit of that liquify tool. So you can find the liquify tool in filter. And actually, you know what I want to do is since I'm happy with this before I get to the liquify, um, I'd like these two things to be joined. I'm going to unlock layer one. And what I'm going to do is go up here to the little layers. And here you have your layer options. <clears throat> and there's quite a few options, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge down. And what this is going to do is it's going to combine uh, uh, that second blur layer with the first one. And only do this once you're happy with your blur because then it's very hard to individually work with it. So I'm going to merge down. And now this is all one layer. 
Um, uh, and I don't have to worry about, you know, anything going on, um, so on and so forth. So now what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to liquify. Now liquify will change the entire workspace. And, um, typically what we're going to use is we can use a lot of these different, uh, effects. And I'll show you what a few of them do, um, like, you know, I don't, this is really just sort of like, you know, a weird effect. So the swirl will, a lot of people use this to like, you know, do uh, like uh, an anonymous like face blur, but you can reverse the uh, swirl. So it's not very good. So it basically just swirls the image around. Um, this is a pucker tool. This actually can be used very well to sort of pinch in. Um, so if you want to like, if uh, around a waist or something, you want to pucker it in. Um, you can use that. So here, like if I want to, um, let me zoom in a little bit, maybe pucker in this area, you can pucker in like so. Now be careful because this really does sort of start to affect the background. You can see the background affecting. Now it does not going to visually matter too much to us because of course this sort of bush is really just static. But again, if this was something else, you might not want to be using that pucker tool. Um, on the other hand, we have the bloat tool. The bloat tool can make things a little bit bigger. So maybe if we want to make her bust a little bit bigger, we can go ahead and you know, fill out that area using the bloat tool a little bit. Um, again, use these things sparingly. Too much is going to make it look real weird real fast. Okay? Um, now, overall, there's a few other tools that I'm not going to get into. And really, you know, these are okay to use uh, for body editing. But the forward warp tool is really pretty good. Um, and this sort of lets you sort of grab and push sort of parts of the image. Um, and try to use a little bit lower pressure or else things get real wiggly real fast. So, you know, it's, it just is too strong and applies too much of, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you want a crater or, uh, uh, in other words, a tumor, you know, uh, uh, put that pressure up. But, you know, if you want to do something realistic, I'd keep it a little bit lower. And keeping the density in the middle also helps to avoid um, really grabbing onto things that you don't want. So it really focuses in the middle of the brush. So let's say we want to use this liquify tool just to maybe bring in the arms a little bit, smooth them out. And this, this is really best done in, in, in small areas to sort of push in or push out just a little bit. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to use just a slightly smaller brush, just slightly smaller, because I don't want to get into the bust. And I'm just going to bring in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. And again, just little by little, a little goes a long way. We're really just sort of smoothing it out. We're not doing crazy go nuts body modification. We're just sort of smoothing. And maybe a little bit on this side too. If you want to make maybe her hair a little fuller too, you obviously can bring it out. Whatever you feel. a wee bit wiggly here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my brush all the way down. Ooh, a little too small. 
and maybe just just a few of these little wiggles just try to smooth them out all right now um it's looking pretty good um, let's say okay for liquify tool for now. And again, let's go from our original. So here is our original. Uh, remember, not original, original. Um, original plus um, color. So this was our original, original. Okay. And then we're going to go back. Uh, and this was original plus the color. And then... This is, of course, with our body edit edits. It's not too much. We just smooth some skin, maybe smooth a little bit of the body, and maybe we want to bring that in a little bit too. So again, it's always good to sort of zoom out and zoom in and uh, kind of go over it. I also think that the saturation on her face could be a little bit. Those lips look a little pale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom way into her lips. And of course, we can also, if we want to put another color or add a little bit of red, um, we can do that too, but what I'm first going to just try to do is use the natural color that's already there and go to um, mm, 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 my sponge tool and make sure the mode is saturate. Let's make this brush a little smaller. And let's just saturate that normal color that's already there on the lips. Maybe try to bring it out a little bit. Let's see, we're getting a sort of richer color. Well, let's see. Yeah, it looks better. A little brighter, a um, little richer. You know, her face is still a little bit in shadow too. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use the dodge tool just on her face to brighten it. Of course, we like to have nice bright faces. So let's zoom in and um, let's up the brush size just a little bit so her face fits in it. And I'm just gonna run the dodge tool around her face. And it's just going to l lighten it slightly especially maybe the eyes. So again, we get a little bit more of her face uh, lightness. Now, actually what I want to do is the lightness kind of um, made it a little dark. So I'm going to saturate just the face now too as well, do an overall saturation of the face. And I'm going to bring it down because I don't want it crazy go nuts. But let's just give her a little bit more color in that face. There we go. Now it's looking nice. Okay. So um, we've lightened, brightened her face. Give it a little bit more color. Um, what else are we going to do? We can crop it. So sometimes when you use the puppet warp, if you see here, it will warp the image. And you'll get these kind of weird things on the edge. So it's good to go ahead and um, crop it, but only after you're done with all your puppet warp and things like that. Um, and I still might want to just adjust this guy right here. So let's see, should we do that with the liquify or the puppet? Um, I think the puppet because I don't want to um, mess up the arm. So let's go back to our puppet warp. And it's a smaller area, so I'm going to go ahead and do um, more points. And let's zoom in. And I just want to take just this little bump and push it in just, oh, a little bit. So let's just line this edge with points. And let's move it into the center here. And we'll grab these guys down here. And just work in a little. 
little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, I don't want to wiggle the arm too much. I don't want a wiggly rubber arm. But I just want to smooth that out a little bit. And it looks like I was successful without wiggling the arm too much. Because, of course, rubber arms are not what we want. Um, so let's get out and see what it looks like. Alrighty. Yeah, pretty good. Just a little bit of smoothing. Um, zoom out. Again, let's just go back. All right. So um, we're looking pretty good. Uh, of course, you can use that on the waist too if you want, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, we've smoothed it out, the, our color, everything else. Let's crop it down. Just crop off that wiggle of the shadow. <laughs> and then of course, let's get her in a nice frame. Need a little bit more space on this side. Okay, um, and there we go. That's a, a very simple, basic body edit. Um, again, before, after. We haven't done too much. She still looks like who she is. Again, you never want to really go too crazy, go nuts with um, you know uh, uh, the editing. Uh, you want something that looks natural. You want something that looks sort of like a feasible body. You just sort of want to smooth out, um, you know, pad in, pad out. Um, little bits of areas at a time. Little tiny adjustments. Don't go crazy. So um, when you do this, you know, I'm mainly going to be grading on, on sort of the naturalness of it. I don't want anything to look obviously edited. Um, I don't want anything to look, you know, obviously unnatural. So, you know, uh, focus on your color, focus on smoothing, focus on um, maybe just, just small little uh, touches here or there. Play around with your liquify, play around. Um, it takes a gentle touch and it takes a little bit of practice. So, you know, be sure to have your original there. Don't be afraid to undo and redo. Don't be afraid to try a bunch of times. Um, and then once you are done, you're going to save as, and you're going to save as your name, full body edit, and please save it as a JPEG. And then it will be ready to turn into me. Um, keep it max. I want to see all your good stuff. And there we are. Um, uh, so I hope you found this a little bit informative, um, and now you know how to do, uh, sort of body editing. Uh, it's not too difficult. Again, just sort of takes a little bit of practice. And again, the key is subtlety. Um, don't go crazy, um, or else, you, you know, can look very, very edited. But, um, keep it normal, keep it natural, keep it smooth, keep it colorful. Um, and I will be back to see you in the next lesson. All right. Bye-bye.